big players in what I love to do uh, in terms of rotator cuff prep with regards to hip, thoracic spine, scapula, thoracic work. On my episodes on the lawnmower, we go with this out of sync kind of lawnmower. So boom and boom with, an, with a driver, an upper extremity driver out of sync. And we're doing the same thing in the frontal plane with our common. And then we're going, um, uh, we're going out of sync with our, or in sync with our loads. So same arm, same leg with all of our lunges. We're here, or we can be here in a crossover. And then also our transverse plane. So we have here and here, we have a lot of positions we'll go after. I'll use the lawnmower matrices, our common and uncommon pivots, um, loading out of sync and loading in sync uh, as a way to really load the scapula thoracic, thoracic spine and hips, uh, which the shoulder loves. We're intended to swing, sling, throw and propel things. So I love to, as much as we can, uh, go after swinging as many things as we can. It's great and fine for the shoulder complex to be able to do that. I also love the pick and the pre press progressions where we get down in a lunge, ice, uh, we isometrically stabilize and we go with a pick, pull, and then a press. Pick and a press have those with our transverse plane and we can go uh, we can add certainly our pivots with these guys too as we go kind of anterior to posterior same hand progressions we can also go uncommon with it boom and boom boom and boom with anterior lateral posterior medial and we go anterior medial and posterior lateral. I also have a little throwing kind of matrix that I've put it put together over the years as well that typically have someone would start with their body weight and then we're gonna go to a little resistance in terms of our slings and our swings. We'll also do these pendulum swings that we've done with the hand on the wall to drive this closed kinetic chain like progression and sequencing. Um, we can, so with a lunge and kind of like a pendulum swing here, the arm we're swinging with, we don't necessarily need to be working or using that arm. It could very well be the left arm that we want to function better because we're providing a lot of dynamic stability in an optimal environment to seed that head of the humerus into the glenoid we get the motion that we need or that we want. So we go with our side to side kind of plane right here, our funnel plane, go with our transverse plane, and we can add a little kind of tweak forward and backwards here, and a little side to side, and a little transverse plane kind of in and out. And then also we can, uh, we can go with our transverse plane kind of head on right here here and here here and here so we're driving a lot of great uh, driving a lot of great motion uh, we'll play around a lot with our single leg rowing progressions in combination with our common and uncommon shoulder to overhead presses I think it's very important that we think and play outside of the box um, in terms of a combination so Combining as many elements together as possible, stability, mobility, strength, power, coordination, time, and rhythm is authenticated for what the body's demands and their needs are. So we'll play around a lot with bear crawls. One of the first things we learned how to do when we were little shapers was to bear crawl hands and knees, hands and feet. So we'll crawl forward and backwards, we'll crawl side to side, and then we'll also crawl in circles and zigzag patterns. We'll, we'll formulate shuttles in which we're crawling forward and backwards five feet, and then five feet back, 10 feet out, 10 feet back. We'll go side to side, 
We'll add karaoke shuffles of the hands and of the feet. We'll use our SFT syntax in opening the hands up and closing them down, rotating them on in. Uh, and then we'll use kind of an on-ground matrix, this three-point kind of like push-up position in which we're swinging and driving in the sagittal plane, frontal plane, and transverse plane. And we can also use a combination of these. To drive proper mechanical loading of the thoracic spine, the hips, scapulothoracic, and of the shoulder joint. The scuff, the thuff, and the huff. And the role it plays in the story of the rotator cuff. It's unique in that today we continue to follow these pathways that tell us we should be doing it for the sake of doing it, but yet accept the fact that our injuries and ability to participate in the things we want to participate in are not at sustainable levels or are not at levels that we're accustomed to engaging in. It's okay for us to think and rethink what, how, and why we're doing uh, the way that we're doing as we kind of blaze this trail um, that's off trail, off path, into a whole other kind of dimension and sphere of, uh, of looking at things. We need to take a look at how the success of the hip and the thoracic spine are going to affect the scapula, therefore then the shoulder, therefore the function, the consistency and the efficiency at which we move upon. We need to take a look at including those features because ultimately the shoulder is going to be successful because of what's taking place around it. If you incorporate those little techniques that we talked about, those, um, those strategies that we kind of talked about, uh, you're going to be very successful. You're going to put your rotator cuff in a solid, diversely richened, neutrifying environment that will be the most optimal for you in reaching what your genetic potential is. This is in no way a guaranteed way for, um, for you to automatically find some form of superhuman strength and ability. Um, but what it is, is an opportunity for you to take these truths that we as clinicians um, we can't deny any longer and that we need to stand up and that we need to recognize and that hey the biomechanics of what takes place when we throw whatever it is even if we decide to go out to the lake and skip some stones with some of our buddies or pals or uh, our kids and stuff like that uh, bottom line is if our hip mobility stability stink if our thoracic spine mobility stability and scapulothoracic mobility stability stink, shoulder's going to get chewed up. And I'll tell you what, it's not, it's not the shoulder's fault. It's not the, uh, it's not the, not the seed. So ultimately the pathologies we develop, uh, the injuries we sustain, the chronic fatigue, pain, and wear and tear that we build up always points us in the path of, hey, it, it's its fault but that's, uh, that's never the case. We're, we're very far from the truth when we buy into believing that. Uh, I want you to play around with these techniques. I want you to play around with these strategies. And I want you to take your Jobs, your Throwers 10 crap, and I want you to, I want you to throw that stuff out, out the door. Um, the positions that we get in with that stuff um, the impingement that that uh, entails for uh, the rotator cuff like structures, the capsule, the long head of the biceps tendon, uh, we really need to step up to the plate and realize that, hey, we're, uh, we're not doing things adequate enough. It's unacceptable to think that, okay, hey, 
we've been doing this stuff and we failed. Oh, well, at least I was doing what they told me to do. Uh, you have a mind, you have a brain, you have a mouth, you can ask questions. And this beautiful brain that you have to internally kind of rationalize rational and irrational thoughts. And it's time that we start putting that stuff to use and it's time that we start challenging uh, what is considered, what has been considered the truth because man, there's a lot of loopholes in it that make me think that, hey, this, um, this is not truth. This is not truth because it doesn't meet these, these physical principles uh, of truth. It doesn't meet these um, biological um, truths and it certainly doesn't meet these also these behavioral truths in which this internal locus of control that the uh, uh, that some of my mentors at the Gray Institute talk about in terms of customizing a plan and approach and a blueprint to and for an individual make that a very very personal thing that uh, that gives them a great desire to want to progress and close the gap on what their genetic potential is uh, I want you to play with these activities, and I think this is really going to revolutionize your thoughts, your feelings, and also your movement sequences.